Once in a while I find a paper that has a really intriguing title. Water as a metal detected at Bassey 2. And this is generally when I get really excited and try to discover if this is actually something worth talking about. Hello wonderful person, today we're going to be discussing this right here. The study with a video right here that was literally able to turn water into a metal. But that is something I need to kind of explain in a little bit more detail. What's a metal? Now obviously from objects around us we sort of understand what metal is. But the word metal has many different definitions depending on the field you're talking about. And so for example in regular life a metal usually represents some sort of a substance that when prepared, polished or in some way fractured will usually have lustrous appearance and will usually conduct electricity and heat really well while also generally being very malleable, meaning that if you were to hammer it, you can actually turn it into any shape, with gold in this case being the most malleable metal of all. But it's also ductile, meaning that you can actually stretch it into some sort of a wire. Now, that's metal in daily life, but this doesn't actually tell us anything about the metal that was discovered in this paper, more importantly, it doesn't actually tell us about the idea of metals in other sciences. For example, when you hear about a metallic compound in physics or chemistry, that's not at all what they're talking about. As a matter of fact, 95 out of 118 elements in the periodic table are considered to be metals in terms of chemistry and physics. And so in this case, the definition itself is slightly different. Furthermore, it's different from the definition from astrophysics. In astrophysics, anything that's not hydrogen and helium is a metal. And that's something we've talked about on this channel many times. But this is not a definition we're using today, we're using the definition from physics. And the definition here is based on the structure of the atom of the element. In certain elements, if the outer shell of these elements is ready to lose its electrons, especially if the substance is solid or liquid, we refer to this as a metal. And because of this ability to lose electrons, that's why metals conduct electricity. So in some sense you can think of a metal as a highly conductive substance that conducts electricity pretty easily. And more specifically in physics, any substance that conducts electricity at absolute zero, or essentially minus 273 degrees Celsius, is considered to be a metal. But the definition doesn't end there. For example, we know that in room conditions, sodium is a metal. But if you start increasing pressure at some point, it stops being a metal. So even though in room temperature certain elements are metals and certain are not, there's actually a way to modify their metallicity by changing either the pressure or the temperature or even both. And this is exactly why in certain planets such as Jupiter, we actually start getting metallic components inside the planet. If you were to pressurize hydrogen, if you were to pressurize helium or methane, it will actually start conducting electricity and become metallic. And because of this, these planets get extremely powerful magnetospheres. Whereas on our planet, because the pressure and the temperature is not high enough, all of this is done by the very, very large iron core on the inside, which is still metallic at these temperatures and pressures. And so metal as a definition is sort of really broad. It does include a lot of different compounds we have on the planet. It also includes a lot of elements that we normally think of as non-metals, but more importantly, Depending on the temperature and the pressure, something can become a metal or a metal can become a non-metal. And it all comes down to the ability to conduct electricity. Okay, but today we are talking about water as a metal. Now, first of all, a quick side note. Apparently this video and actually the study itself was by Philip Mason, who's also a relatively famous YouTuber who also made a video about this and his channel is known as Thunderfoot. Totally not related to this video or the topic, but just something that I wanted to mention. Anyway, water as a metal. Now first of all, water is obviously not an element. Water, just like carbon dioxide, is a chemical compound. Or essentially a substance that contains several elements on the inside. But by itself, it's still not really a metal. It does not conduct electricity. And this is of course something you might remember from your chemistry class. Pure water does not conduct electricity. Okay, but why is it that you can actually get electrocuted if stepping on a wet bottle that's connected to a life cable? Well, actually, in this case, the electricity is not conducted by water. Water is a really good solvent. It dissolves a lot of things. And so when it ends up dissolving salt, salt creates a lot of different charged ions, which then, in a sense, act like metals. They actually conduct the electricity with the water itself doing basically nothing. So in this case, the water is not the conductor, it's the salt inside. And so when only a small amount of ions is present in the water, 
and suddenly a part of a human body is introduced into the water containing these ions, because human body is a better conductor, all of this electricity then starts flowing through your body and, well, basically electrocutes the person. However, if you were to increase the amount of salt in the water, such as for example in the ocean water, it then becomes almost impossible to get electrocuted by this. The ions on the inside will conduct the electricity so well that any electricity passing through the water will actually never really reach your body. Your body in this case sort of starts acting almost like an insulator. Anyway, totally off topic, not really what we're talking about, but just a fun fact. So when it comes to pure water, it's not a metal, it does not conduct electricity by itself. Unless you pressurize the water. If you were to create ridiculously high pressures, such as the ones found inside Jupiter, then you end up squeezing the molecules so much that the atoms do start to act as conductors. It then does become metallic. This is something we believe happens inside many different planets that are massive enough. And for water, this pressure has to be approximately 48 million bar. That's a lot of pressure. But turns out there's also a way to create metallic water without really high pressures and without high temperatures. And this is pretty much exactly what this image right here shows. Metallic water. Water that became conductive after something was done to it. Something that was recently achieved at Bessie 2, a chemistry research facility located in Germany. And in this case it was an experiment involving an alkali metal. Here they used an alloy of sodium and potassium. But you might have seen experiments with sodium and potassium before. You might already know what happens to these metals when you place them in water. They tend to have a really dramatic reaction, including actual fire and usually some sort of an explosion. And because of this, any experiment involving sodium, potassium or other alkali metals has always been somewhat on the dangerous side. Which is also one of the main reasons why nobody has ever discovered what exactly happens to water when you actually add alkali metals to them at that specific moment. But in this case, as you see in this video, the experimenter is going to be adding potassium to the water, making it explode as a result. But the scientists in Germany decided to do it differently. They took the potassium uh, sodium alloy and added a lot of water vapor that started to form really really thin film around the surface of the droplet. And as you can see in this beautiful video, the droplet starts to change colors and actually becomes golden. This unusual golden film on the droplet, that's metallic water. Which is really amazing, because it looks like when you turn water into a metal, it becomes golden in color. And that's something nobody expected. But what exactly happens here to make water metallic? Well, right now the scientists think that it's because of the electrons escaping from the sodium-potassium alloy, which end up dissolving in the water and thus turning the water metallic, forcing the electrons in water molecules to start conducting electricity. And this phase transition from insulating water to metallic water for some reason also turns water golden in color. Now that's something that we can't really explain right now, but it's something that I'm sure someone will try to explain in some of the future studies. And it stays this way for at least a few seconds. Now obviously we don't really know what happens after, but I'm sure once again it will be investigated in future studies. With the other discovery of course being the fact that we can actually avoid the explosions between alkali metals and water. And we can avoid this by doing what they did. By adding the water vapor instead of the actual water to the alkali metals, thus producing the chemical reaction. And so overall, definitely a really cool experiment, definitely a really cool discovery, but is it going to have any practical use? Well, that's not a question I can answer right now. This is a completely brand new discovery. Anyway, on that note, check out the paper and all of the relevant links in the description below. And once we learn more about metallic water and its properties, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.